Hello, today I'd like to talk about Leonhardt and Philbin's Geometry and Light, the Science of Invisibility. Okay, so this is really a textbook. It's a textbook in the ways of curved light. Okay, so there's light and it curves and stuff like that. You may be familiar with this. The most common example of curved light would be a mirage, right? So you get a mirage on a hot day and so what happens is, especially, say, on a road, right? So you see mirages mostly on roads, sometimes in the desert, but mostly on roads. Well, maybe all the time in the desert, but I don't live in one, so I can't tell you anything about that. Um, you get this hot road, so the tarmac gets really hot, and that means that you have a temperature gradient uh, increasing as it goes up. And as you have that temperature gradient increase, or actually decreases as it goes up. The temperature reduces as it goes up. And the index of refraction decreases, I think, as it goes up, right? So the index of, of refraction decreases as it goes up so that it's actually faster for the light to travel at the lower place than at the um, higher place. And so you get a bending of the light. And this is all basically the same as with Snell's Law. So uh, here we go. So we end up with something with Snell's Law like this, right? The light takes the least time, that's for Matt's principle, from the fish to your eye. And that gives you Snell's Law, all right? But if you have a continuously um, changing, varying index of refraction, you get a path like this, right? You get a curved path. And that means you're looking down here at the sky, which is up here, right? And that's why you see something that looks a little tiny bit like a um, like water. Because, of course, if you had water, right, light comes from the sky, reflects off the water, and comes to your eye. So the same effect that gives you the optical effect of water while you see a blue lake, for example, is not because the lake is blue, it's because the sky is blue. Right? And so for the same reason that you see a blue lake, well, similar reason, um, you see a sky. Now, this is the science of invisibility. Right? Since it's the science of invisibility, what it's looking at is something like this, where what happens if the geodesics of light curve around something? Now, this is the cool kind of invisibility. The kind of boring kind is, you know, you have a bunch of sensors on the front and a bunch of cameras on the, in the back, and you know you just get a reproduction from the cameras of what was be on the other side that's a little bit boring but if you actually found a material like this and you know you could wrap that around your tank or something like that that is cool right you're using um, this geometry to hide this fish so you've got the blue fish here it's invisible because none of the light actually hits it now, that is a little bit of a problem but you know maybe we can fix that and um, over here, we've got another fish. And if we were to register this with our eyes, right, the, the light never comes to this fish, so we don't see it. That little point there is this invisible fish. There's another fish here, and it gets distorted. So that's kind of bad. But on the other hand, would you rather have somebody see a distorted fish or the real you when you're trying to sneak up on them? So that's what that book is. This book is about. Now it's a nice, thin book. It's about uh, what 250 pages, so a little more than 250 pages. Um, 259, and here is an old receipt with um, some writing on it that's telling me to look up a book that I never looked up. So I probably read this. 2008, 2010, somewhere in there. So fairly early on in um, my living in this part of Houston. So, because I didn't know where I was getting my coffee at the time. So I, you know, I know, I know somebody. I somebody I was talking to when I was reading this book. Cool book. I probably looked it up a couple of times while I was in. New Orleans a little bit later as well. Okay, so this is a nice little book. It's going to talk a little bit about stuff like that. That was all just for Matt's stuff. 
Um, but it's also going to apply the rules of general relativity, the geometry of general relativity to space. So you're going to be able, that's how you're going to be able, or to light. And that's what's going to let you see, or not see, an invisible, um, an invisible situation where you can make something invisible. So let's take a peek at the contents. We have a prologue. We have Fermat's principle. The first chapter is all on Fermat's principle. Um, letters from Pierre de Fermat. That's more or less an introduction to all these things. I just showed you a couple of examples from that. Variational calculus, right? That is how we find paths of least whatever. In Fermat, for Fermat's principle, that's path of least time, right? And that's very, that's what we use a lot. Um, get Hamilton's equations and so on. These are the things that you're actually going to use to figure this stuff out. Now, this is a real textbook, right? Uh, I mean, just take a peek. This is a real textbook, and you get um, Hamilton's equations, and this is going to do stuff with, um, you know, positions and frequencies and stuff like that. So we've we've got something here to work with that'll put everything together for us. That lets us actually look at these um, different paths. Uh, conformal mapping and uh, transmutation and all these different sorts of, they're not that simple, but um, all these things that let us look at different situations. Spherical symmetry, that's always nice. Tomography, that's sort of the inverse problem of this. You get the information and what was, what was it you saw. And, you know, and sort of an end of visible spheres to perfect lenses. So this is sort of an introduction. These are the things that you may or may not get in your introductory mechanics class or if you get a junior level optics class, which is not that common as anymore. I mean, that was something that was common 100 years ago. Then they moved a lot of the optics out of the curricula for making room for quantum mechanics. And you get into your differential geometry. So we're going from our um, minimization principles to our differential geometry from general relativity. And you know, we're going into coordinate transformations and the metric tensor. The metric tensor for general relativity is what you're going to look at as sort of your um, potential, I think. Is it the potential of the field? I think it's the potential. Uh, vectors and bases, this becomes very important. Um, maybe I should look at that. I, I, there's so many things I want to get um, across to the students about vectors, and I just can't find a good book to help me out explaining them physically. One forms and general tensors, one forms are like derivatives. They're, they're not exactly derivatives, but they're similar. Um, I think probably a derivative is a one form. And I, I don't think they're all the same, but uh, this is another sort of way to look at things when you're dealing with differential geometry. Um, things get more and more complicated. Vector products and the Levi-Civita Levi ten, tensor. I haven't said that one in a long time. Um, th these are more things that you have in general relativity. And now you have to worry about covariant and contravariant vectors. Uh, the covariant derivative and um, the metric. Then you have some calculus, divergence curl and Laplacian, curvature, geodesics, parallel transport. This is the big thing for, you know, um, general relativity where you can take a vector and go around in a circle and at, in a curved space time, it's going to come back, right? It comes back with a different direction because space-time is curved. So that's, that's a very interesting thing. This is how, you know, we talked about those walkers on physics frontiers. This is sort of how those are supposed to work. Not completely convinced that they do, but um, 
that's how they're supposed to work. It'd be cool if they did. Uh, conformally fat, flat spaces. Uh, we care, care very much about those, the hypersphere and space-time geometry. So we're really just doing stuff from gravitational physics. Not really, because this is all about um, putting together something for uh, optics. Then we go to Maxwell's equations. So we've gone fro we started with basically ray optics, went to differential geometry, which is yeah, we've got differential geometry, some very advanced geometry. Now we're going into Maxwell's equations. This is important for electromagnetic waves because that's what optics are. Um, does not have as much room as I would want to go for going from electromagnetic waves to geometrical optics, but uh, you can get that anywhere. If you want to get done with the class, um, you know, this is what you do. And geometries and media, spatial transformations and things like that. These guys here are the, th are the soul of the book. Now, you'll notice we're at chapter 5. We'll notice that there are 39 chapters, right? So 39 chapters means each chapter is basically one lecture, right? one lecture in a semester-long class, one 50-minute lecture. So 50-minute lectures, one semester, 39 of these things. There are a few extra course, a few extra days in a course for other sorts of things like tests, like tests and things like that. Um, and, you know, there are a few things here talking about the spatial transformation media, what kind of things are doing this sort of thing. But then I get into perfect invisibility devices, like we are just talking about, negative refraction and perfect lenses. So, you know, at this point, negative index of refraction materials have been made. Metamaterials have been made. Real materials don't do that, but uh, index of refraction materials are, have been made. Cloaking, perfect imaging with positive refraction, uh, moving media, which is kind of important for for a lot of things. Optical, the optical Ahrana Bohm effect. I'll go with my normal pronunciation instead of the real one because I need to practice it. Say Aronov. And analog of the event horizon. This is your black hole, optical black holes. So the cool stuff is here. That is one, two, maybe three weeks, the last three weeks of class. And then the first 11 weeks are math, <laughs> okay? I mean, that's the way classes go. Uh, my general relativity, right, it was a lot of differential geometry and a, you know, a little tiny bit of physics at the end. Um, so let's grab a random chapter in here. Let's look at the metric cha tensor chapter and, and show what's going on here. So. This is a very nice book. It has these exercises. Oh, here are a couple that don't have solutions. But you'll notice that most of the um, exercises have solutions. So this is not quite exactly like Landau and Lifshitz, but it's very similar to how Landau and Lifshitz is written in some cases. Um, so we go through here, right? It's very simple, bare bones. Talk a little bit, give an equation, talk a little bit about that equation. Um, make it a little more general, start talking about things, have some simple illustrations. Um, and here we get this thing is the metric tensor, right? This is the thing that tells us how the um, geodesics go around, what the paths are like in this curved space. And so we get through this, and then we get an, get an exercise that's an example. So show that 11.6 is true in any coordinate system, and then you have, to, and then you're supposed to do this, and then read the solution. Right? This is not the way all students do things, but that's how it's supposed to be. And then you see you get a matrix. Isn't that nice? He tells you it's a make matrix equation right there, but you go through and you get some more stuff, and probably another. Um, exercise down here he says, with a solution and another one with a solution. Some nice 3D images to let you see some um, different vector fields. And we end. So this one, this particular chapter does not have any 
exercises that don't have solutions. So working with exercises like this, it's nice that you have the solution, um, but it's really hard not to look at the solution when you're reading the exercise, right? So that's a uh, that's a habit you have to get into if you're trying to work through these books um, because it's the working through them that's important right it's not seeing the solution seeing the solution doesn't do it so that's his introduction to the metric tensor and there are many many other things going on you see here the different directions at these different um, intersections between these um, these geodesics. So these are different um, unit vectors, basically, vectors and bases. Uh, let's get in here. Let's see if we can find some good stuff in the at the end, right? Um, the last three chapters, I think, are really good. So let's moving media. This is very important. This is a way to measure the speed of light. Fits so this experiment, or this is for the dragging of light by a moving medium. Fresnel drag. Uh, here we have the optical iron of Bohm effect. So basically if you can get a vortex in there you get some interesting effects. Right. So this is what this is all about is looking at this particular effect. Um, and you can see some of these images and what they have and this is Aronov Bohm effect is very important in that sort of shows the reality of the phase in a um, quantum mechanical situation. And it's been a long time since I read this, so I'm not completely sure what's going on here. But we're, we still have the Fresnel drag moving medium. That reminds me of something else, but we won't do that. And of course, 39, we have the analog of the event horizon. Um, basically, water can't or light can't get out of the medium. Uh, I'm not sure what that does to a real object. So if the light actually gets stuck in your medium, it's going to heat it up and that's going to do bad things to your medium after a short period of time. Um, but this is where you're going to get your invisibility. So it would be interesting to see what's going on. Notice there's a Penrose, these are both Penrose, this is a Penrose diagram, this is a folded Penrose diagram. This is something that you get with a black hole. This is how um, you look at basically entire spaces, you know, infinitely large spaces. A very strange thing to see in the book on optics, right? So that's um, what's going on there, and Beckenstein has the whole thing. So that is the book. Oops, don't look at that. Um, it's a very nice looking book, especially for $25. It may be more now, but um, you know, especially for $25, this is a really good looking book, uh, really well written by somebody who does this sort of thing with geometry and light. So uh, this is a good recommendation for somebody who's interested in that stuff. It is a pretty tough book, right? If you don't have the background, you are going to have some problems. But, you know, I do trust you. I think I, I think you could get something out of this if you wanted to. So thank you very much for listening and we will come back again next week with another random book.